Um, there it is. <laughs> we are on. Good afternoon and welcome to the Health and Wellness Sphere webinar part two, Wellness Hacks When Working From Home. I know you all have been thinking a lot about it and we've got a great, great panelist um, in attendance today, starting with Dr. Brittany Holiday. She's a chiropractor. We're going to hear from all of our panelists in just a moment. Jeanette Gennaro, exercise physiologist, welcome, and fitness trainer. Love your blog. I've been on it. Teba Oreta, licensed massage therapist and yoga instructor, and Rev. Dr. Lisa Graham. She is an acupuncture physician and holistic healer. Welcome, panelists. How are you today? Why don't you kick us off, Brittany, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. Brittany Holiday with Lux Lifestyle Chiropractic. My office is located in Coral Gables, Florida, and I am still currently seeing patients. I practice a technique of chiropractic called NUCA, so it's very specific, upper cervical, and I also have my master's in human nutrition. I'm very excited to be on this talk with some wonderful professionals today. Thank you. Janet, Jeanette, Gennaro. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And my name is Jeanette Gennaro. I'm a personal trainer and I have a master's degree in exercise science. And how I'm helping my clients now is one-on-one -on -one personal training via FaceTime. I also offer exercise classes that I can teach through Zoom. And I'm also helping individuals strip their lifestyle as my company, The Naked Formula, helps them do. And these are videos that you can look at my channel online, Naked Formula. Thank you so much. Teba Aureta, say hello. Marco, hi everybody. My name is Teba Aureta and I am the owner of Denatura Wellness. Uh, is a corporate wellness programming company. We help offices and their staff well in their workplace. We also have a couple of clinics here in Miami where we practice massage therapy and um, yoga. And very excited to be here today. Thank you, Teba. RevDoc. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited to be here too with this fabulous group of professionals. We're like Charlie's Angels. <laughs> yeah. I'm a licensed acupuncturist uh, and a board certified herbalist. I work with issues of body, mind, spirit, and fertility. I am currently treating COVID 19, uh, both symptoms and also sending folks for antibody tests. I am open. The clinic's in Coral Gables, but I also do see people virtually. Well, thank you again. Welcome, welcome. My name is Marco Evans. And I have the pleasure of moderating this great group. And we're going to start. I'm going to switch over so you can, uh, we'll start with the first slide. And uh, what do you say we get started? Perfect. Good. <laughs> All right. How are we doing? Yeah. We up? Uh, yeah. Let's, Marco, let's put it on slideshow. So play from the beginning. So that we can Our see. left top. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's try that again. Well, Brittany was going to start talking to us a little bit about the neck and jaw. That looks great. Perfect. So we're coming up with a couple of pictures on the next slide. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna start here with, uh, we're gonna start with the neck and the jaw. So one of my biggest concerns that I'm getting from a lot of my patients, since I'm still seeing patients and a lot of their lifestyles have completely changed since they're working at home, is a lot of complaints with their neck um, and the positioning. And as you can see in some of these images, you can see working on a laptop, working in your bed, how that can potentially become a problem because your neck has this positioning that it should be in where it's kind of upright on your shoulders here. This is the back of your head and you want your neck to have this really nice curve. So when you're sitting at your laptop and looking down like in the bottom left, your neck's doing one of those things. When you're in your bed and your pillow, it's doing one of those things as well, which puts a lot of pressure and stress on the nerves um, and the muscles and the ligaments and tendons and can cause a lot of issues and discomfort so repositioning that posture to where you're sitting upright and keeping the neck in a nice neutral position is really really key now if you've been sitting like this for a period of time and you do have pain in your neck and your upper back and your jaw because those muscles also attach here in your jaw 
then Jeanette's gonna show us some things to do to help strengthen up those muscles. So as you are sitting in a good posture with your neck and head on top of your shoulders, then your muscles are gonna be able to hold you there and stabilize that. So let's hear from Jeanette now. Yeah, so the position that you guys just saw, not only are you putting strain on your um, neck, but you are weakening certain muscles and tightening others. So a position that it's very common that I see my clients just hold their natural posture in, you're gonna see their shoulder blades or your rhomboids, they're stretched out and those pectoral muscles are tight. I want to mention, um, I, I love the fact that a lot of people are excited about working out at home, but a lot of these type of exercises, you know, you're gonna have your push-ups and whatnot, but that's going to just exasperate the situation that's going on with your pectoral muscles. So it's very important to do exercises like, you know, grabbing a hold of a resistance band and just pulling those resistance bands towards you. That will help strengthen out your back and um, help stretch out your uh, pectoral muscles. Another thing I want to mention um, is when uh, you, we can go ahead and move, go to the uh, picture with Teva with the neck. Okay, so I'm seeing my clients not only be able to um, have a hard time getting into that proper posture because of those uh, pecs are tight and the shoulder blades are um, loose, but I'm seeing a lot of issues with the neck. So a very simple exercise that you can do. Now we're gonna stay on this slide, but um, Brittany, if you wanna touch in, because I know the chin tuck is very popular. Some people think it's just pushing your chin back, but Brittany, if you wanna touch on like the safety of how to properly do this? Yeah, so the chin tuck exercise has been around for a really long time, but what the what our chiropractic research has shown that just tucking the chin just straight back actually straightens the curve in the neck. It doesn't keep that curve that I was just showing right there. So instead of going straight back into the chin tuck, you want to tilt your chin up just slightly and then go back. So then you maintain that curvature in your neck. Like Teba shows in this picture, the second step is to elevate the chin a little and then go back. Perfect. So that's an exercise that you can do at home and now you know safely how to do it. So um, Teba, go ahead and touch on not only how to get in that proper position, but how to stretch your neck. Great. Um, I actually do these chin tucks all the time because I'm one of those people who has military neck. <laughs> Um, the uh, next picture that's coming up is going to show you some stretches that you can do for your neck uh, and your shoulders. So bringing your arms behind your back and then tilting your head to the side, as you see on the picture on the left, is a wonderful way to release a lot of tension all the way up from the top of your head to your fingertips, actually. You can also do very nice and slow and gentle neck rotations to either side. And this is gonna really bring that blood flow back into your neck. Um, and this is something that's really easy to do at your desk uh, every 20 minutes, if you like. I mean, that's what I would recommend. Um, but you know, sometimes these neck pains are uh, difficult to pinpoint. Our neck is doing fine, our curvature is fine, so there must be something else. So Rev Doc Lisa is gonna give us some pointers on what that might be. But before she does, I'm gonna show you one more picture of a uh, massage that you can do on your neck, <clears throat> holding your sternocleidomastoid. And I know that that's a mouthful, but it's that big muscle that juts out when you turn your head to the side. You can actually grab it and you know, manipulate it a little bit as if you were separating stuck pieces of paper. And that will also release a lot of that tension in your neck and even avoid some of that tension headache that sometimes happens. But if all of that is fine and you still don't know why you're getting neck pain, Rev Doc Lisa is going to tell you why. Oh, Rev Doc, let's unmute you because you seem to be on mute. I'm so sorry. Here I am, everybody. So here's the thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can't find a physical reason for pain because it hasn't reached the physical reason. So just consider that there are possibly other reasons why you might be in pain. Pain can reflect thoughts and attitudes that you have. The body and the mind and the spirit are interconnected and interdependent. And sometimes the pain is actually coming from internal causes. The biggest internal causes are anger and fear. There's different kinds of anger, you know, resentment, bitterness, and there's different kinds of fear. 
anxiety, um, nervousness. And these actually poison the system. In Chinese medicine and in the esoteric medicines, we understand that energy, thoughts and attention precede a physical symptom that happens. So qi precedes blood is how we talk about it. But really it's just that these things can arise from thoughts and the way that you're thinking patterns and the way you pay attention to things before they become physical. If this is true for you, then you can work on this stuff with a coach like myself, a holistic healer, perhaps a hypnotherapist, or even a mental health counselor who's open to the uh, reality that a lot of times our pain does not have a physical um, origin. For example, let's talk about neck pain. This pain can actually represent inflexibility. Your neck, you don't want to turn your neck. It hurts to turn your neck. Well, maybe you don't want to be looking at something in your life that you really need to look at in order to proceed on your path. We, you know, it's interesting as a culture, we say, gosh, that guy is really a pain in my neck. We don't say somebody's a pain in my elbow or someone's a pain in my nostril. We say pain in my neck because this is one of the natural places that we hold emotion that is a, a about a situation or a person perhaps in our life. So we can begin to release that by acknowledging that that could be going on and use the affirmation, I'm at peace with my life or this person or the situation to help start to move that neck pain. That's fantastic. So as Brittany mentioned earlier, the neck is very much linked to the jaw and actually um, issues in the neck reflect in a lot of, uh, I think it's called bruxism, right, Brittany? Uh, yeah, grinding of the teeth. Grinding of the teeth, clenching. Some people have a really hard time sleeping at night because of the pain and wake up unable to even move their jaw. So a really simple way to release a little bit of that tension or a lot is to actually breathe in through the nose and exhale through the mouth as you open up that mouth nice and wide. <clears throat> stretching, excuse me, stretching out that musculature that goes from your cheekbones all the way to the edge of your jaw. And you can use your fingertips to give yourself a bit of self-massage doing circles or even just drag down as you open that mouth and you're gonna find a lot of release even for people who get headaches. Um, but again, jaw pain also has some other reasons for being. So don't yeah. think that the mouth guard is the only thing that's going to resolve it, right? Red right. Dot? Well, actually, a mouth guard, I have a mouth guard. This is an issue that I personally have. A mouth guard saves your teeth. But a mouth guard doesn't heal the underlying anger, resentment, or perhaps desire for revenge that is causing the, the bruxism or the grinding or the clenching of the teeth, which I, throughout my life, have suffered from personally, either to a small or large extent for quite some time. I know who I'm angry at. <laughs> I'm working on it. An affirmation start is, if this is something that might resonate with you, you can start thinking, I am willing to forgive. And just that awareness, just that willingness to start to forgive, even if you don't like the idea of forgiving or you don't know how to start, just that start can start the process allowing you to forgive and help alleviate that job pain and also make your life better. I'm sitting here thinking, how in the world do we get all of you all together and just go from one station to another and fix everything in one session? We need to open that up a joint <laughs> center. That's what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you say we talk about shoulders? Yeah, so we can move on to shoulders. So throwing it right back to the neck really quick. So the importance of, of keeping everything in a good position, whether it's spiritually, socially, mentally, physically, um, especially with the neck, because the neck is where we started. It's also the most important area of your body because your immune system markers lie there, your blood pressure markers. Most of your control for your whole body is up in your neck. So if you don't treat it well, it's hard for the rest of the body to be in a better position. So if we look at positions here for the shoulders, they go kind of hand in hand with the neck. So if you're um, sitting at home and you have a laptop, which is single-handedly probably the worst thing to work on because you're having to round your whole body to actually physically see the screen, my best recommendation to kind of keep your body more upright so everything is rigid and, and flowing from top to bottom is to take that laptop and put it on some books, actually raise the screen so it's eye level and, and get a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse so you're not having to hunch and round your shoulders or kind of like separate your legs in the second picture so you're shorter and, and able to see the screen. And this will help you, you know, 
protect yourself most importantly um, and, and, and not get into a position where the body is really tight and constricted in like a C shape, you want to be an I, you want to make a statement. Um, but in, in the case, yeah, you want to be like an exclamation point, not a C or a question mark. <laughs> nice. um, but uh, in the case that you do feel like your body is very rounded, which is very common to see, especially now that people are working from home, um, Jeanette and Tava both are going to show us some things to do to kind of open up that chest cavity along with fixing your posture that will help. This image is really, really good because it, it, it shows just the basic ergonomic friendly desk space. And if you're working from home, you may not have all these options, but you want to mimic as close as uh, you can to this. Most importantly, the part where her head and her neck are looking at the computer screen. And that's the most important part of this whole setup is can you get your computer screen where it's eye level so you're not looking down and hunching over because that affects the entire system versus you know not not working on that so if, if anything i would make sure the monitor is at eye level um, and we'll go through the lower back and spine a little bit later in this presentation but that's my biggest takeaway from that Brittany, i don't know about our other attendees but i'm sitting here trying to do everything you all are telling us to do i'm breathing i'm sitting up straight and i'm trying to do everything i'm not sure if it's working but maybe RevDoc <laughs> can help out I don't know. I'm going to go buy a wireless uh, keyboard this weekend. Thank you, Doc Holliday. <laughs> Seriously. So we're talking a little about shoulder pain. Uh, shoulder pain can be related to viewing certain life experiences as burdensome. You know, you have all these plans. We in the West really like to plan and we think we have this control. And then our plans get get tossed out the door by whatever, the COVID-19 pandemic or by a, a sick a family member or something. And then we start to look at some, at some of these experiences as burdensome. But the thing is that all our experiences are here to help teach us to grow. And we can start by thinking of this affirmation, my experiences are joyous. It's all about how you look at things. Now we'll, well go move on to Yes, let's move to a different part. Brittany. Okay, so back to the upper back. Um, again, here are some more just classic home working options, <laughs> which, oh, yeah. are all bad, which are all bad, hence the red uh -huh. curvy line that Teva has drawn for us. <laughs> um, this, is, this is inherently an issue. I know because people are, you're working from home, you're sitting at home, you're doing everything at home, you want to kind of be comfortable and move around. I would pick one or two areas in your house that you make classically your desk space, um, something like, in the picture to the bottom right there where he's sitting at his, his dining room table. Again, the computer's too low, but at least it's gonna be rigid and keep him upright um, and help protect his posture versus working in the bed or the couch. I would highly not recommend that because those surfaces are very soft. The body's gonna scoop in and that's gonna put a lot of pressure and stress you know, on the system and on the muscles and the ligaments. And that's gonna lead to these pain signals, these um, discomforts, these aches and pains that maybe you've never experienced before or exacerbated from the past. Um, so definitely pick a station in your house where you can, you know, be the best posture as possible. Sometimes it's not perfect, but as long as it, it, it gives you some support, that would be what I recommend. So a dining room table with a rigid chair or a desk with a chair, or even I have some patients that are standing with their computers on like a very um, or something like that and it seems to work really well for them as well um, but I think the next slide table is going to show us some stretches to kind of open up that spine if in a situation that you are looking like that Red Sea. <laughs> now I do want to quickly jump in here and say you know adults we are experiencing this but I want you to keep your eye on teenagers because playing video games will also get them into this position. Um, now we all understand yes it's important to be flexible and stretch. But these stretches that I'm showing you right here are really important because our body structure will change. We, will, we can get tight to the point that we cannot be in that ideal uh, position for our spine. So these are two mm -hmm. stretches. Now if you notice here, um, the first picture, the picture on the left, you are lifting your chest and really curving your spine. What you want to avoid is pushing the hips in too much because that's going to strain the lower back. So your hips are in a neutral position. You're going to pull in your navel to engage those transverse abdominals, which I'll talk about later. But in this stretch right here, the first one, you're lifting your chest 
and arching that back, okay? You can take this a step further and hold on to a belt or a towel, as you see on the picture on the right. You're holding that behind you, and that, that will really allow to open up those pectoral muscles and the front of the uh, delt, as well as stretching out that lower back. So again, it's not all about, okay, great, it feels wonderful, but these stretches will allow your body to actually be able to get into that position. Um, so in the next picture, you're gonna see something else. We forget about our lats. You wanna pull in, yes, those rhomboids, those shoulder blades, you wanna pull those in to strengthen those muscles, but simultaneously, you will lower your shoulder blades, activate those lats, and it will help just wake up all those muscles in your back to help get you in that right position. We are looking at you know, the pieces of the body individually, but as you see here, everything is connected. So we are talking about the chest and the shoulders, but notice here on the stretch, pulling those shoulder blades back and uh, addressing those lats. Uh, Teba, she is going to go ahead and show us another um, stretch for the back, spine, and ribs. Yes. Come on, everything we're seeing here today, you can do at home. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. These are all easy things to do. And I mean, we always recommend that people get up off their chair, obviously, to do them. But if for whatever reason that's a difficulty for you, um, then a lot of these items, you can actually use a chair as a prop. Um, so for the back and the spine, doing the twists here, like we see on the picture on the left, is a wonderful way to open up not just the chest, but also to mobilize the neck and give your neck a break. It helps mobilize and open up the arms as well and those deltoids. And it also stimulates your internal organs when you squeeze. It's almost like wringing out a wet um, mop or a wet towel. Um, this is a wonderful way of bringing oxygen and blood into your spine, getting a nice natural release. Um, if you look at the picture on the right, that's a great way also of opening up the muscles. Some people may not know that there's actually muscles in between your ribs. Uh, they're called the intercostals and they will get tight and collapsed. Uh, when we're kind of, you know, slouching down, working, or even if we've had a cold where we've been sneezing or coughing a lot, quite tight. So this kind of stretch really helps release that. And remember, you know, neck, uh, and well, neck and, and back problems account for the third costliest uh, uh, problem to treat in the United States. So, you know, absenteeism, which cost the U.S. government about $300 billion a year to treat, is something that we can actually take care of on our own at home. So if you look at the next slide, we've got a wonderful example of a very famous stretch, the cat-cow. So again, here what we're, tr what we're doing is mobilizing I like to call it like serpenting, like a serpent, like a snake, uh, yeah. spine, right? So you, you kind of make that spine as, as mobile and as elastic as possible to get that movement and that blood flow in. So you inhale and arch the back a little bit while keeping your navel engaged as a, cat, as a cow. And then you exhale and roll the back in like a cat would do. And that will give you a nice release. And last but not least, uh, the next picture is going to show you my all-time favorite stretch. When we sit for long periods of time, those hip flexors begin to get really tight. So doing a small lunge uh, on the left-hand side, you're going to see that's going to, again, open up the front part of your body to release you from a lot of that tension that you're building up by sitting and even grabbing your leg and pulling it behind you nice and softly. Um, if you can't reach your ankle, you can always use a strap, a belt, or a towel and hold that ankle up so that you can, again, stretch all the way from the chest and the arms all the way down to your knees. So, RevDoc, you want to tell us a little bit about what upper back pain uh, means? And Teba, yeah, did I sure. understand it may be a bit of breaking news that massage therapy has now become available again? Did I hear that correctly? Oh, yes. Lisa, Rev Dog, tell us a little bit about what the Surgeon General said on Tuesday's call. On Tuesday night, the Surgeon General of the state, they have a call every week that I'm, any licensed provider can be on. And he said, unequivocally, massage places and professionals can work again. 
in Florida. So, you know, if you are stiff and in pain from doing all this incorrectly, now you know how to do it correctly, but you can also get, you'll get relief from your awesome massage therapist like Teva Arreta and um, the natural wellness. I'm gonna talk a little bit about mid and upper back pain and the emotional and spiritual reasons you might be experiencing mid and upper back pain. This has a lot to do with, this is of course, the chest is where we hold the heart. And this is about love. And this is also can be about self-love. So this can come from a feeling of lack of emotional support or holding back love and also of guilt. Get off my back. All of this is this part of the body. Now guilt is a, it can be appropriate or inappropriate. Guilt can help us become better people, but it can also really limit us in, in ways that are not fair to ourselves, that are not, are, are not really correct and best for ourselves. And working through if you have appropriate or inappropriate guilt is something you can do with the coach or counselor. An affirmation start here is I love and approve of myself and love life loves and supports me. Try saying that into a mirror and seeing how it feels. You might be surprised. Now, Rev Doc, I, I can tell you firsthand that I've been to your office and boy, oh boy, when I come out of there, I am completely relaxed. Um, Brittany, I hope to see you sometime soon under great circumstances, but Teba and both Jeanette, you will go into the home or business of somebody. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Jeanette, we can't hear you. I think you're muted. <laughs> right. So yes, um, you know, my business helps strips people's lifestyle. We make it simple for them. So we provide in-home personal training. Given the situation now though, um, I'm still able to go into their home, if you will, uh, via the technology um, options that we have. So really all you need is a little bit of space and you know, the willpower to carve out some time to get it done. Of course. Now, Teba, I know you've been inside of some of the world's largest law firm offices and accounting firms. Everything that we saw with your exercises, are you training people in their offices to do just that? Absolutely. So we take them a little bit through that ergonomics uh, assessment to see, you know, where they're at at their desk, uh, which Brittany uh, illustrated with us earlier. We give them some tips and things that they can do that will immediately relax their neck and shoulders. Um, we take them through exercises and self-care stretches, and we even offer on-site yoga classes as well, um, and on-site massage therapy, which is wonderful, because a lot of people, you know, they spend most of their time in the office, and then they don't have the time. Once they get out of there, they're stuck in traffic. They've got to go do the shopping. They've got to prepare dinner, bathe the kids, et cetera, et cetera. Be good to their spouse and all of that. So we try and uh, help them out in the space where they spend most of their time and when they've got a brief, brief break to attend. Well, I know there's always an advantage to going to an office. And Dr. Holliday, you, you're completely set up with Lux Lifestyle. Let's talk about lower back and hips, please. Yeah, definitely. Um, lower back is probably the number one concern um, for most people in the United States. Uh, sciatic pain is another common thing that people will use, you know, pain in the glute. Um, and a lot of it's very much connected to your posture, the way you're sitting, the way the muscles are firing and the way the ligaments and tendons are presenting themselves. Um, and in this picture, if you can see that, this gentleman here is sitting with his foot under his leg, which is a huge issue because it tilts the pelvis. Instead of the pelvis being level, it tilts it like that, which puts a lot of strain into the joints. It puts tension on the muscles and can cause a lot of discomfort. So if you're gonna sit, you wanna sit with your feet together and on the floor or on a little bit of a raised surface but but not one foot under the other not with your legs crossed because that has the potential to create a kind of misalignment pattern and then you're shortening strengthening certain muscles unevenly and causing pressure and stress um, on the joints so definitely looking at where your legs are, are is important and also for your lower back because again same as your neck your lower back has this curvature in it like this, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see there. And um, you want to support that in your chair. So in this image, you can see how his lower back, your, the chair has like an open space. So you'd want to fill that space with some sort of blanket or pillow that would support the lower back. So you're sitting upright um, with a nice curve versus slouching 
and then again pinching and stressing those lower joints so a blanket or a pillow is really nice to put there and again making sure your legs are balanced is a super good key and tip to protect your lower spine and your hips now Brittany, early on when i was younger there was a game that we played called twister do you recommend that <laughs> <Fun. laughs> Well, if you're just having fun with it and you're not pushing yourself past your limitations, then it's totally fine. It's kind of like yoga. <laughs> I want to remind you all of our past, yourself past limitation. <laughs> there you go. I want to remind all of our attendees that we have a Q&A section of your Zoom meeting. Feel free to post your questions there. And when we get a moment and a break, we'll be answering every one of them if we have the time. Jeanette, I think we're back to you on the hip and back. Yes. So I know all of you have heard about core strengthening type of classes, and you may have heard your physician tell you, you really need to work on core strength. You may have thought that that means doing sit-ups because you think, okay, abdominal exercises, sit-ups. But take a look at the picture on the right. You're gonna see the rectus abdominis. Those are the uh, six-pack muscle, if you will, okay? Those muscles are responsible for flexing your spine. But core strength is actually all the way around your body. Take a look at the picture on the left. Those are your transverse abdominals. They are located behind the rectus abdominis and notice how they go all the way around your core. That's what you need to focus on when you're talking about core strength. Something very simple I want you guys to do. Place one hand on your chest, one hand over your navel. And I want you to take in a nice deep, 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 deep breath. Even let your chest come up. Now I want you to forcefully exhale all that air, okay? Did you feel your hand that was on your chest lower? If you did, I want you to do that same exercise again. I'm gonna walk you through it. But this time, when you forcefully exhale, I want you to make a conscious effort to keep your chest lifted. What you're gonna notice is your hand on your navel is gonna come in, okay? So everybody take in a nice deep breath. Forcefully exhale for me. You felt your navel go in. Those are your transverse abdominals engaging. And that's what I want you to do every time you bend over to pick something up, every time you're standing in line, I want you to engage these muscles because they're going to, going to keep your back safe and your hips in a proper position. So again, you may think that's something you need to do only when you're exercising, but as you're going around your daily activities, thinking about engaging those muscles. So I was mentioning about that keeps your back safe. If you do have any sort of lower back tightness, Teb is gonna walk you through some stretches that you can do for that. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that, Jeanette, because Dr. Brittany knows very well that I didn't engage my core very well a few weeks ago when I decided to move furniture around in my house, which <laughs> the norm for a lot of people these days it's not <laughs> going on at home they're doing diy projects apparently and so when they change <laughs> the core they throw their back out so of course i had to go see dr holiday thank goodness that she's uh very close to me <laughs> and was still open mm -hmm. Uh, to help uh, to help me do that and actually the classes that you and I Jeanette have been teaching together uh, on zoom that are open classes for everybody have really we've really made an effort to focus on strengthening those transverse abdominus muscles um, and and I like what you mentioned as well because a lot of people think that crunches are the way to go and even you know women who are pregnant or uh, everybody, women and men, those transverse abdominis and strengthening that core is actually also gonna strengthen your pelvic floor, which is really important as we age. It's important not just for women who've just given birth, it's, it's a fallacy to think that it's just for them. Um, the pelvic floor exists in men and women and keeps everything, all of those internal organs, nice and contained and working properly. Um, so helping engage that, we do that in yoga, we do that in your classes, is going to keep us very healthy down there and very happy yeah. down there. <laughs> <laughs> very important. <laughs> Come to think of it. Um, so yeah, we mentioned the lower back. So this is another one of my favorite stretches. And again, this is something that you can all do now. I love when I teach this, I always call it the oops, I dropped my pen on the floor stretch. Um, 
when we go into the law firms and the boardrooms, we always tell people, you know, you don't have to be on your own in your, at your desk to practice these stretches. If you're in the middle of a meeting or a conference and your sciatic is starting to flare up or your lower back is starting to hurt, uh, you can stretch your glutes and just pretend you dropped your pen on the floor. So you want to cross one leg over the opposite one, like we've seen here, and then drop that pen and reach down to get it. And immediately when you do that, you're going to feel that nice deep stretch in your lower back, your glutes, and even your hamstrings. So feel free to practice that now. I know I'm definitely adjusting my posture as we go. <laughs> I don't know about you, Teva, but if I started doing that, I'd feel like Jim Carrey in one of his comedy <laughs> movies or something. Uh, Rev Doc, I so think we're back to you to talk about we lower are, back. Yes, yes. Well, especially these days, people are feeling some insecurity about finances because of what's happening in the economy here. Uh, that also people can feel that they don't belong. This is something that happens irrespective of a pandemic. And actually, some people can fear money because they didn't, weren't raised learning how to manage it, for example, or don't feel that they're entitled to having that uh, material abundance. And so sometimes that can manifest in low back pain. Also, anger can show up here, that you're annoyed or frustrated. Again, in our language, we talk about this. We say someone is, a, I put PIA here, but I'll say here, pain in the booty. Somebody <laughs> or a situation is a pain in my booty because, again, pain in the neck, pain in the booty. We don't say pain in the elbow. This is where we hold that tension. An affirmation start here is I am safe, the world supports me, and I trust the process of life. Well, Rev Doc, I'm sitting here with the wellness angels. I don't feel like I belong. What should I do? <laughs> well, we'll talk, Marco, and absolutely you do belong because you're you're Charlie. <laughs> well, goodness, I think at that point I better get on my knees and feet and transition over. <laughs> Doc, we're back to you. Um Sorry, I'm just laughing. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the knees and the feet tend to um, very much correlate where the to where the hips are located. So in these two images that are placed here, you can see that um, on the top image there, his knee is fully extended um, with the heel resting on the coffee table. So the pressure of the leg is actually pulling down the knee. So it's going to hyperextend the knee and put a lot of stress on those back ligaments back muscles, so your hamstrings, your calves, and can put a, a really big strain onto the knees and cause some knee discomfort. And the image on the bottom there where his knees are upright, given that all of these are really bad posture images anyway, the knee here is fully, is, is flexed, <laughs> which can also tighten the hamstrings and cause mm -hmm. the pelvis to rotate and then refer to the lower back. So um, when you, if you had you know, taking a photo of that image where the girl was sitting at the computer and she, everything's like a 90 degree angle with her. So her spine, her hips and her knees, your body likes those 90 degree angles because the joints are in a rested state as well as the muscles and the ligaments. So if you can kind of mimic that as much as you can, keep yourself in these 90 degree angles, then you're gonna protect those joints much, much safer and you're gonna reduce that muscle spasm and therefore pain and discomfort. Um, Brittany, you but, um, have an x-ray machine at your office, correct? I do, yes. Okay, so if somebody comes in to see you in your office in Coral Gables, um, you'd be able to not only look at them physically, but be able to take images to be able to diagnose. Yes, I have a digital x-ray machine and I have a computerized nerve scanner as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I can vouch for Real quick and mention something about Dr. Holiday. You may think of her as just somebody that can help you with your neck and back issues, but that's not the case. She can help you with pain in the knees, in the ankles. In fact, my husband, he did some work on the car and that led to a couple days later, him feeling discomfort in his fingertips. And I said, I bet you something happened while you were doing that. And sure enough, he went to go see Dr. Holiday and she was able to fix some issues that he had in his neck. So again, don't think about her just for neck and back pains. Think about her for just have, you know pain overall speaking of pain overall let's talk about the knees okay when you think about your joints if the muscles that are surrounding that joint if they are weak or imbalanced that can lead to pain so a very common uh, exercise that you can do to help reduce knee pain or rather I should say to help strengthen those uh, muscles around the knee is a squat, but that may be even a little bit too challenging for you. 
So here's an exercise that you could do where you get a resistance band. If you see on that top picture, you get a resistance band, place it around your ankle, and then start off in a 90 degree angle and extend that foot down to about 45 degrees. That's going to activate the quad, the quadricep, that muscle in the front of the leg. As you strengthen that, it's gonna provide stability for your knee. Um, if that's a little bit uncomfortable for you, you can go ahead and do the same type of exercise that you're seated in a chair. You can have someone behind you hold the resistance band or you can um, tie it to an anchor point. Same thing, start off at a 90 degree and extend the knee. A uh, strong quadricep, you, again, you don't want it to be too tight, but a strong quadricep can help stabilize the knee. Now, if the quads do get tight, Teb is gonna show you some stretching and some way that you can relieve tension in that muscle and the muscles around the knee. Jeanette, I'm so glad that you're not using the naked formula beautiful people in your images because it would make us all feel bad. <laughs> Still good looking. All exercises, all ages. It's all about how you function. Yeah. Right. right. It's Teba, let's, it let's, function. <laughs> Teba, let's hear more about the knees, please. Well, you know, it's interesting because I hurt my knee um, recently while I was skiing. My issues way is the opposite, is actually a very tight front of the thigh or quadricep, very tight IT band, so the side of your thigh. And so what's been a godsend for me, aside from going to see Brittany to get adjusted for the knee, has been to actually roll on a ball, <clears throat> which is something that I do a lot with my clients who want self-care. So we do these virtual sessions where I teach them how to self-massage and release a lot of this pain. So rolling on a ball or on a foam roller, I prefer the ball because being a circle, being a sphere, it gets into a lot of nooks and crannies around the muscles and in and around bone that sometimes the foam roller can't really get to. Um, also, they're a little more flexible, so they make you want to go back to rolling. <laughs> so um, if you're experiencing some knee pain, you want to release those quadriceps like you see on the image on the right. So you would be facing down on the floor and rolling and pausing in the areas that you find are tighter and really mentally engaging your mind and release because sometimes when we feel a lot of that tightness and pain when we're rolling, we tend to hold our breath and get a lot tighter. So this is as much a physical as it is a mental exercise of letting go. Um, the picture on the left I really like as well because a lot of the time the knee issues have to do with uh, tension in the back of the leg as well and the sides. So what, you, what we're doing here is we're using two balls and sandwiching them in between two surfaces so that you put that pressure on your calf. And if you're wearing high heels, ladies, this is amazing to release that tension in the back of your calf. And it's also a great way to release tension in the front of your leg, which is very difficult to do unless you have a massage therapist doing it for you. So if you need to get this release at two in the morning and your massage therapist is not there to do that for you, then this is a great way to care for yourself. Um, and really, also just find an opportunity to release your own pain. So what's very interesting about the knee is that issues in the knee and in the hip and low back often have a lot to do with our key foundation, which is our feet. So Jeanette is actually gonna to talk to us a little bit about why treating the feet is equally important to release. We're gonna have a talk with you after this is over. It seems like you're getting broken pretty often. You're like the shoemaker that needs to be repaired. I mean, who massages you? <laughs> the balls. My own massage, thank goodness, um, here in my home. Um, but you know, it, you know, it's funny. Everybody thinks a massage therapist feels great all the time, and I'm just human like everybody else. You know, I also run, I fall, I you know go skiing, and I you know, and I whatever, I get injured. You know, and 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 so I also yeah. have to do my here. So I'm very aware of, of how that feels and how important it is to be able to do it on your own. Because when I can't get to sleep because my back pain is that bad and it's almost midnight, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to call someone right now. So what can I do for myself? And that's sure. where things really come in really handy. Or even when you're traveling for work, 
you know, you get these balls, you take the air out of them, you put them in your suitcase, and you take them anywhere. You take them on vacation, you take them on a business trip. They don't occupy any space in your suitcase, and um, they're a wonderful, wonderful way to care for yourself. Well, good. Let's get into that a little bit. looks like we have a golf ball, and we have something else. Uh, Jeanette, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So I want to bring up the fact that we do most of our exercises in shoes. And, you know, there is a purpose for that. It does offer support and protection. But I want you to think about what it would be like to try to work out your upper body if your wrist was in a brace. It wouldn't be as effective. Think about how many joints and how many muscles you have in your feet. It's also important to do some exercise practices like yoga where you're able to really work on the strength of, of all those muscles and really get the, uh, your strength coming from the ground up. So think about adding exercises like that to your routine to address that part of the body. Because again, if you're always exercising in shoes, you're ignoring that part of the body. And so again, it's not only important to strengthen, but to also relieve some tension and flexibility. And then Teva's going to describe how she's doing that um, using these golf balls and that uh, sea urchin looking thing. <laughs> <laughs> the sea urchin. <laughs> well, in case you didn't know, actually, the foot is made up of 28 bones, 30 joints, and more than 100 muscles. So, wow. and connect up the leg, and then they connect up the thigh, and then they connect all the way up the body, all the way to your eyeballs, actually. Um, in fact, in some dissection courses, not to get too gory here, but they will cut the Achilles tendon and start pulling it, and it'll go all the way up and make the eyeballs pop out. So I just want to sh you know, say that to illustrate it is. For, for us to understand that the body isn't just a series of segments, it's actually a whole. So if the feet are not cared for, everything else in the body, like a Jenga game, is going to uh, suffer as a result. So these exercises here and these self-care exercises, what they do is they help release those tight muscles in the feet. Uh, here in South Florida or in any warm weather climate where we're at, people wear a lot of flip-flops, which actually tightens the foot um, because we're trying to hold on to the, that bottom of the shoe. Um, women in very, very high heels, especially in Miami, maybe not, you know, lately in the, for the last four weeks, but it'll come back as soon as we're all let out of our homes. So um, working with a golf ball, it is pretty hard. Uh, it's a hard surface but it's a wonderful way to massage in between all of those segments of the feet and feel you're actually when I always recommend that people work on one foot first and then place both feet flat on the floor because they're going to notice how much wider the foot they've worked on feels, which means that that musculature has relaxed and they have more stability. So that's sending a message to your brain a very clear message of release and alignment up your spine, uh, et cetera. The other picture, uh, Mark, if you wanna just go back for a quick second with the sea urchins that you call them, these are called Yamana foot wakers. And all those little knobs, what they do is they anchor into the fascia, uh, that gelatinous um, membrane that's underneath the skin that covers our muscles and when we stretch out the feet or we put our body weight on them what it'll do is it'll help almost create a bit of resistance and anchoring so that we can stretch even further so um, these are wonderful ways to stretch out the the feet and get relief for not only pain in the back of your calf but also knee pain and even hip and lower back pain. Teba, um, is there any indication when when our our panelists and our attendees will be able to get a uh, uh, a pedicure? Because it's <laughs> got to be on everybody's mind. <laughs> it really is on mine because I do my own and I do a terrible job. So I'd rather... <laughs> I'm interested in getting one of the sea urchins for myself. Teba, is that something that you can provide for your clients for sale? Yes, absolutely. I can provide it for them, or I can also uh, 
give them the information of where they can get it themselves. Uh, the last I checked three weeks ago, they, the sea urchins were still in stock. Some of those other balls that I showed for the knee rolling were out of stock because a lot of people are working a lot with uh, Yamana body rolling. Um, I personally do a lot of those self-care routines with people at home. So if they have the equipment, great. If not, we work with a tennis ball. We've even worked with a can of beans. Um, <laughs> or even the top of a, of a candle, you know, the candle top, you know, a metal one, you take it off. We've worked with that. So there's definitely ways of working uh, with other items that you may readily have in your home. Well, what do you say actually, we move on? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I wanted to say it's interesting because the East has a tradition that you got to take care of the feet because when the feet start deteriorating, then everything else does. It's really important to take care of your feet. And I actually ask people to use tools like that to help prevent plantar fasciitis in particular, or people that already have it. And I said, I mean, there's stuff online. The Yamana stuff is wonderful, but if you can't get that, you can get foot massage balls that work at Target online that are like $4. So uh, really important tools. And a can of beans, sure. Um, <laughs> so that's great. Um, a little bit about knee pain. This can be about, you see I have a chrysalis turning into a butterfly here. And uh, the nature of life is change. And it's difficult to accept that. But like John Kabat-Zinn says, you know, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. And so, uh, again, talking to a good coach or counselor can help you deal with the change in your life and how to become resilient with it and, and coast on those waves. So knee pain can be about fear of change and also related to our ego and our pride. And I don't mean that ego in a negative way. It's just our sense of, of, of self and sometimes self-importance. But it's not a negative way. We need an ego. Um, an affirmation to start opening this up is I am more flexible and flowing. Think of a willow tree that is flexible in the wind as opposed to a strong oak that doesn't bend, but if the wind is too hard, might break. Affirmation start. I am flexible and flowing and I can handle this. I believe that all of you can. Well, I'm going to plug in a couple questions here. Back to foot pain for a minute. This uh, is... Yeah, finish yeah this sure. This is from Jody, uh, Jody Mitchell. Do you recommend the golf ball for planter? Fasciitis. Uh, Teva, yes. I, I, I like the spiky balls more than the, what is your experience, Teva? My, I, my preference are the spiky ones, those foot wafers, if you can get them. You can even get them. I've seen them at Marshalls as well um, because they're a little softer and you can actually bring your body weight on them. And that's yes. the very important part of the routine that I teach when I do one-on-one -on -one, uh kind of exercises with these things so that people understand how to use them and how to use them not just safely but effectively. Um, the golf ball is quite hard. So the golf ball will also help relax, but it's a little more limited in what we can do with it. Um, if you can have both, great. Um, if not, what it means. <laughs> Well, good. Uh, here's another question. Uh, this is from Elgin Polo. When should the Yumina ball, um, recommended by Teba, how long should you spend, uh, I believe that would be on each foot, the question is phrased, on each muscle. On each muscle. Is it five minutes, ten minutes? Could you just, if you were at your office, could you just leave it under your foot all day and play with it? You could, but the, um, my recommendation with those exercises Normally we do like a one-to-one -one session so you can learn all the different things that you can do with them. And then what you want is to be able to get on them standing because you need the body weight on the actual surface and you need to be able to bring your body forward, sideways, you need to be able to work. If you think of my hand as the foot, you need to be able to work each line of muscles that correlates with each line of the toes. So it's important to be able to stand. If you're sitting, you're not putting a lot of pressure on the ball. You're not really going to get a lot of result. But actually having them there and seeing them is very important because when you look at it, it'll remind you to work on it. Personally, of course. I actually have them right by my vanity. And uh, when I wake up in the morning after I take my shower, sometimes I try not to do it while I'm brushing my teeth because doing that means I'm not focused on either one thing or the other, right? And so well, we all know you're a great multitasker. Right, but multitasking is actually not that good for you. It's not a very mindful thing to do and it 
it leads to a lot of mental chaos at the end of the day. So spending your time and keeping your attention on one thing at a time is really important. So being able to see the balls there every morning reminds me to get on them. And I actually work on them maybe for five or 10 minutes, but that's enough. As long as I do it every day or every other day, it's, uh, it's helped me, my clients with plantar fasciitis who've started working on this regularly swear by it. So yeah. We've got about five minutes Absolutely. left. A quick question for Brittany. Keep in mind that we're all doing things at home, Brittany. We're, we're watching movies, we're riding bicycles, we're walking. A couple of quick points and just things that we can do. And then I wanna hear from you, Jeanette. A couple of quick things we can do to increase the core, increase your posture. You know, maybe we're not going out to dinner yet, but you know, a booth rather than a chair. What recommendations can you make just in daily life to help, um, I guess, solidify some of your recommendations here? We'll go to you first, Brittany. So I, I like the chin, the chin tuck exercise is one of my favorites. And that's one that can easily be done in the car because you have your headrest that kind of angles towards your neck. So you can use that as resistance. It's something that's very simple to do kind of on a day-to-day -day routine if you are, you know, in your car driving um, or if you're at your house, you can still do it at your house. Um, my next best recommendation for posture is a towel exercise where you put a towel around the back of your neck. Table, I think, I don't know if you have the band with you and you stretch your neck. <laughs> I can show you I mean I have advanced too but you put a towel behind your neck and you kind of stretch your neck back so you work on you know bringing proper curve and alignment Taba actually has a band that's good for that but you can also use a towel um, oh, that's great that's a really good exercise slash stretch to do for posture um, and then just some you know just basic <laughs> planks I don't know Jeanette probably has some opinions on the planks but I do like what? those first strengthening core. Have you ever done chin exercises in a restaurant on a first date? Um, not lately. <laughs> well, let's go to Jeanette. Maybe Jeanette has some recommendations on how we can integrate them. Yes. So, so double chin, and that's really not very appealing at all. <laughs> okay. So actually, um, Brittany was right. One of the exercises I was going to recommend is a plank because that will really get all of the core engaged. You will um, be using those quadriceps and it's one of those exercises that you could do barefoot. So you're gonna re really get the whole foot. Um, if you guys want, I'm going to post a video on my YouTube channel, Naked Formula, showing you these two exercises I'm gonna mention, a plank um, and some variations that you have. And the other thing I'm gonna mention is a squat. I know it sounds like a scary exercise, but if you guys can every day sit at the edge of a sturdy chair or at the edge of your couch and just stand up and sit down about 10 times, you're going to be working on a lot of muscles. And the fact that you're seated um, or you're starting and you're ending at a seated position is going to keep it safe. So again, Check out my YouTube channel. I'm going to show you the variations that you could do for a plank and a squat. Those are two exercises that you can do um, and you can integrate, you know, everything I've been talking about fitness with those two exercises. Well, it would be great if you could include a link on our distribution after the webinar is over. That way we'll have everybody's contact and a link to your YouTube channel or to your Facebook. But I think we're gonna close out just by talking a bit more about foot pain. Rev well, doc. Just, yeah, let me just close this out again. Uh, feet, a bit of fear, just like the lower back. Fear of stepping forward sometimes. So think about that. Is this something that, are you scared of moving forward in your life? And an affirmation star can be, I move forward with joy and ease. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Good. Thank you We're all, all so much. We're all doing the best we can right now, you know. <laughs> we are. And wellness angels, you have done so incredible today. We've recorded this seminar and I know we'll be sending it out. Uh, I think we've just about addressed all of our questions. Here's one more. Can we get the porcupine ball in the UK? Absolutely, yes. Oh, yeah. And congratulations. And they're available on Amazon, on eBay. You've got massage warehouse sells them as well. Marshall's here. Uh, Yamina USA, who uh, makes their own version of them. And... Um, yeah. Tab, I think it would help to spell it. It's it's Y A M U N A, right? Yamana. 
Like the river in India, Yamuna. Like the river in India. And also, honestly, just Google uh, foot massage ball and it will come up. I promise. Yeah. I've sent many people to buy them. <laughs> well, good. What a pleasure today hosting. It's been great hearing from all of y'all. You've done such a great job. Um, we're going to end the session. I think we addressed all of the questions and wanted to thank you all once again for joining and to our attendees that we're here for the last hour paying attention, asking questions to four great wellness angels. Thank you so much. I'm blessed that you joined and I appreciate everything you're doing to help others. <laughs> thank you, Marco. Thank you. Pleasure is ours. Take care. <laughs> Everybody who joined. We'll be sending out our information and links to our YouTube channels, our website, and everything else when we're done.